So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So let's just get right down to the nitty gritty of it. God created man and he created woman for the man. The man is not created for man. The woman is not created for woman. So let's look at it. If you cannot tell me the truth about what your gender is, why should I trust anything that comes out of your mouth? You already lied to me saying you're something that you're not. So, let's look at the sodomy. We should not call it transgender or homosexual or anything like that for what it is. You are a sodomite. You are against God. You hate God. Don't tell me that you love God and then go against His Word. You can not go against God's Word. No. I will not accept your lie. You cannot tell me that He loves you the way you say He does. Because it is an abomination. If somebody was to come and hit on you every day, how would you feel about that? You would grow to hate them. Sure, I know. God loves everybody. God does love everybody. That's why can you say, wake up. Wake up and come to me. Because I have created everything. And I'm going to take everything and wipe it out. Because you will not listen to me. You won't. Let's just get right down to the nitty gritty of it, buddy. A sodomy. What's a sodomy? A man loving a man. No punches, no sugar coating. How in the world can you stand to take your dick and shove it up another man's ass? How can you do that? It is filth. It is confusing. Fusion. It is nothing but going against the Creator. You go in there and you get animals. You rape children. Let's just get right down to it. I am sick and tired of hearing about this. Going into a man, going into a bathroom, hurting an eight year old. Mm -mm. Think about what you're doing. You're taking your dick and shoving it up another man's ass. And it is a waste that comes out of there. Your body waste. And it's called shit. It's body waste. That makes it filthy. That makes it stink. That makes it... It's, it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible act. And if you say to me, Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. You make it sound nasty. Well, it is nasty. Especially in the Creator God's nostrils and eyes. Quit it. Change your way. It is wrong. You are hurting the people. You're hurting everybody. Oh, but I, I like my ways. My ways are the better ways. Sorry about your luck, but it ain't. God made the laws here. God made them. And God will make sure that whatever he does is going to go through. It is a law. And it's a law that cannot change. This is not like man law. Man's law you can change. But God's, no. You cannot change none of creator God's law. They are set in motion. That's like you got gravity. If you drop something, it is going to go all the way to the ground or the floor. It is set in motion. You cannot change it. How can you change anything that is set? If you mess with it, you're messing with the Creator God. And you will get cursed for that illegal act that you're trying to do. You cannot play God. You cannot be God. There's no way on this earth that you could be God. So quit trying to be it. I'm, I've heard... <clears throat> several times this morning about this eight-year-old that was in the bathroom and this guy choked her. Luckily, the mother was there. You can't even go to the bathroom now. Well, I have somebody in there trying to hurt you. God said the day would come and that you would not want to leave your home. Well, 
apparently we are here. We are here. And we're going to be here until he comes back. Look, this sodomy is nothing but a lie. I got to calm down a minute. I will not say that I am sorry for what I said. I am not going to say, oh, God will forgive you. No, I'm not going to say that. The only way that God is going to forgive you is if you turn from your evil ways, and that is evil. Because it started out with men going to bed with men. And then they brought animals into it. Then they brought children into it. They are bringing everything that is against God. You cannot eat from the same table that of God and Satan. It won't work. If somebody comes to you and says, so-and-so did something to me. And then so-and-so comes to you and say, well, he did this or that. And uh, you cannot take from both of them. There's, you can't. You cannot be on both sides. The best way to do it is say, I'm going I'm to be on the one person's side. If not, you're two-faced. Can you understand what I'm trying to say? God is not going to take two-face. You either are or you're not. You're either right there with him or you're against him. Now, it's totally up to you what you're going to do. My sinuses are going crazy. Oh, well. But I am I am really upset about this. You... You're telling me a lie from the beginning that you are not who you are. You are <clears throat> a filthy person because you want, I mean, if you go into it, it is just right down filthy. Filthy. And why would I want you to come in my house or me go to the bathroom after you? It's filthy. It's disgusting. It's gross. And then, <clears throat> you know what I found out one time? They take, they put a gerbil up their butt. Come on. Why do you want to put a gerbil up your butt and kill it? That's what you're doing. You're killing it for a thrill. Oh, you, you have no compassion. No compassion. Because if you had compassion, then you would see, hey, man, I'm killing this gerbil. I'm ki You're killing a person's soul when you do that. Both of you are. You're killing each other's soul. You're saying, God did not make me right. He didn't make me right at all. He don't know what he's doing. You are questioning God about his authority. Authority. It goes back to the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> oh, yay, did God not say? You questioning. Don't question God. Don't question him. Because sodomy is it's it stinks. And the lesbians, oh don't even I look. You are passing at the best thing that you could ever have in your life and that is to become pregnant and have your own child with a man there is nothing better and look at this way you have three people you go to bed with one person all right then you decide you're going to go to bed with another person all three of you whether you have done it physically or not have been in bed with each other because your soul is attached to that person. Think about it. Think about when you go and have sex with somebody. Just free willingly. You're spreading your soul throughout everything. And that is wrong. <clears throat> Give your soul to one person. I know. But look at the world today. There's so much divorce. So much 
<clears throat> I want to be me. Well, you should think about it before you get married. How We are not taught that you give your soul, part of your soul, away <clears throat> with whoever you marry. And when you marry that person, it should be for the duration of your life. And if you think later on that you're going to uh, say, oh, I'm... I want a divorce because we're not compatible no more. We've grown apart. Look, excuses are like assholes. Everybody has one. You just are selfish, and you see something that's better on the other side of the fence. But, buddy, when you jump that fence, you see that, whoa, wait a minute. What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? And you're sitting there wondering, why did I do that? I have I messed my whole life up. And don't tell me that it happened. Because I have done the same thing. Anybody that is older, that has been through it, knows. And that is where you have to listen to your elders. Your elders will teach you. Look, I've been there. I've done that. You don't want to do this. Stop. I don't care what it is. Don't do it. Your elders has already done been through it. Because your elders is older than you. That, look, do I have to have a truck run over my head to find out if I like it or not? No. Do I need to take cocaine to see if I like it or not? No. Because if I take cocaine, what's it going to do to me? It's going to grab my soul and it's going to take me to hell. Because that's all you're looking for anymore is cocaine, 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 heroin, whatever. And you cannot tell me that pot is a gateway drug. No. Let's go back to beer. Beer can be a gateway drug. It is more of a gateway drug than uh, pot is. I mean, you have to go and you have to say, Hey, God, is it okay for me to smoke this weed that you created? That's between you and him. I don't care. I know one thing. It is better than uh, the medication that they want to give you for pain. It's better than the medication they want to give you for cancer. It's better than the medication they want to give you for bipolar. Anything. Because it relaxes your body. No, people, I do not smoke pot. I do not smoke marijuana. No, I do not. Because this is a personal choice between me and God. But I have to say that God created it. And if you want to... So, unsubscribe to me, I don't care. And this is God's channel, and if God says do it, do it. I'm saying God, it's God's. He made that plant. He made a lot of other plants too. So, I'll be right back. God created good and evil. The question is, is which free will are you going to take? Yes, it's free will. You can have one or you can have the other. You can have either good or bad. You can have either cursing or blessing. It's totally up to you. But look at this. You have a hell to shun. In other words, you need to stay away from hell. If you don't understand what hell is, Oh, let me go and let me tell you what hell is going to be like. You're not going to like it. You will not like hell at all. <clears throat> We're going to go to uh, Luke 16. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared simplicity every day. He feared people saying something about him. Oh, I can't speak about God. I, I might get, uh, I might offend somebody and then they'll jump all over me. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid in the, at his gate full of sores. Let's think about the sores. Everything that, all the 
criticism that people throw to him. Oh, there's no God. I should be able to do what I want to do. I have free will to do what I want. God said I did. No, the free will is do you have the right to choose good or bad. Choose whatever you want in this world and see what happens to you. And desire to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked at his sores. Look, they say that dogs licking on your sores will heal them. I believe that. I had a dog that I had a real bad sore on my arm and it would not heal. And this dog licked it every day. And it healed up. So I know it's true. Okay, 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Oh, he died. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Check it out. When Lazarus died, he was carried to Abraham. You want to be carried to Abraham? Or do you want to be buried? You go down. You don't go up. You go down. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Oh, look. You're taking your eyes with you. And he was being in torment. And seeth Abraham afar off Lazarus in his bosom. He's seen Lazarus being held by Abraham. So you have your eyes. You want to take your eyes to hell? Let's go on. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, oh my goodness, he took his voice with him. He had a voice. Have mercy on me. He had, he still had a his soul, his the soul saying, Look at me, I'm in torment. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Think about this. You cannot by the time that he took his finger out of that water, it had already started evaporating. And cool my tongue. Oh, look, your tongue. You're going to have your tongue in hell with you. For I am tormented in these flames. He feels the flame of God because God said you would not listen to me while you had was walking the earth. Now you listen to me now, and it's too late. I have to turn my back on you. 25. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime resistest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. You took all the good things of the world, and you embraced them. But Lazarus, every time he turned around, somebody was dogging him, making him look bad because he trusted in the Lord God, the Creator, and his Son, Jesus Christ. And he, let's see, likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. You want torment now? Take it now. The torment is worth now. The torment is worth having now, but it's not going to be worth it later. It is worse later. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fix, so that they which should pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. You can't, we cannot go through there. If we go through there, uh-uh. It cannot happen. God has created it not to happen. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou mayest would ascend him to my, uh, my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them. And at least they also come into this place of torment. Look, go tell them. Go tell these people. Go tell them. My family, excuse me, my family, that you don't want to come here. Okay? All right, 29. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophet. Let them hear. He got ears. You got ears to hear the word of God. And you're going to take your ears to hell. Everything you have now, all your feelings you have now, you're going to take it to hell with you. Everything. Think about it. 30. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, 
But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Oh, wait a minute. Let's read on. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses, dead, him Moses is dead now. And the prophets, which the prophets are dead now. And they have got the word of God right here. They have men saying, look, Jesus is coming back soon. N okay, finishing up. Neither will they be per persuaded through one that rose from the dead. Who rose from the dead? Jesus Christ rose from the dead. If Jesus Christ cannot persuade you that he is real, sorry about your luck. Sorry about that. I had some company show up. <clears throat> Let's go on down to 17. Then said he and to his disciples, It is impossible, but that offense will come. But woe to him to whom they come. Look, you stand up for Jesus Christ, you speak for Jesus Christ, and you say, Look, sodomy, child molestation, abortion, and the list can go on, is wrong against God. It's wrong. God keeps records of this of what you say and how you protect and show him. And if Jesus Christ cannot save everybody when he was on this earth, what makes you think you can? You can't. Sodomy is going to keep on and coming, child molestation, abortion, and everything. Because that's the way they chose to live. And, it, and number two, and it were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. You forgive him. Forgive him. And if he trespass again, uh, against thee seven times of the day, seven times of the day, turn again to thee and say, I repent. Thou shalt forgive him. Forgive him. Sure, it is a hard road to travel to forgive somebody. It is a hard road. And it is even worse when you cannot even forgive yourself. But you have to forgive yourself. And that's what all these sodomites need to do is forgive themselves and start afresh. Every day you wake up is a new day to start your life over. Sure, you're going to have stuff come up in the past. But that's whenever you got to rebuke it. In Jesus' name, rebuke it. It is so hard. I have to... I have to work on forgiving myself of things of the past. But Jesus Christ has already forgave me, but i got to forgive myself. But that's what I'm trying to say is let God forgive you. You forgive yourself. Because if you can't forgive yourself and you can't, you can't forgive others, why should God forgive you? Now, let's look at the diseases real quick. Everything that these sodomites are doing is putting diseases on them. And that, I, I know that they say that it's man come up with AIDS. But think about this. God could have come up with the AIDS. Because think about what the, uh, the body waste going into another man's body through that in disgusting act. Okay? So... I don't understand how come people will not think for themselves and see how, how that life is when it comes to God's laws. Because God's laws is really what counts. Alright, I'm going on 20, 25 minutes. So I think I've took enough of your time. And, uh, and I'm not sorry for what I said. I'm not sorry a bit that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I'm not sorry that God gave this channel, uh, the internet, for all of us to be able to put on to show his word. 
And these false prophets out here saying, oh, but he took all the commandments and he put them on the cross with him. No. I don't believe that. I do not believe that because you have the Ten Commandments and they are still good today. You cannot say that it is okay for us to do all against the, the commandments. We know there's only one God and that is the Creator God. And He has His Son, Jesus Christ, which was the Word. And the Word became flesh and it dwelt among us to fulfill the prophecy. Okay, I need to quit, because I could just go on, because Jesus Christ is the only way out of this mess, and we cannot, we cannot go through any other way, but through the blood of Jesus Christ going to the tree and dying for us. Well, I'm at the end of my rope here, so I better go. I love you guys. Bye-bye.